on the hair, I'm telling you. <laughs> the goal, like I told you today, was to have a genuine conversation, which yeah. I know that's kind of hard to have while we're like staring at a camera yeah. and uh, with the mic and everything like that. Yeah. But the goal is for people who would like to be missionaries but have mm. no idea what it's like. Yeah. So you can actually say from your own experience. Yeah. So we've got some questions, but it's not about the questions as long as we have an authentic conversation. Yeah. The natural. So the quicker we can forget about the camera, the better. Yeah. <laughs> first question. Um, first off, do you want to... Is it on already? Yeah, we're on. We're live. Oh, we're okay. We're live, live already. We can actually grin. So, Chamanipsua, Sansabaya. We're coming here live in Cambodia, Kaip, Cambodia. And um, we're here with Sayan, who's been here for how many years? One and a half. One and a half. That is experienced. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Could you tell me a little bit about like what brought you here to Cambodia? Um, simply, I had God call me to Cambodia. I always wanted to be a missionary um, for many years. And God laid... Uh, Asia in my heart for, for a long time, more than 10 years before I came and uh, just uh, like three years before I came to Cambodia, God laid in my heart when I was in prayer, uh, the name Cambodia comes to my mind and yeah, that's for me how I came to Cambodia. I knew Cambodia, I'd never known like where Cambodia was. Um, I had not heard about it. A lot of people probably heard about like the like Khmer Rouge and everything, but for me, I never heard about Khmer Rouge or anything about Cambodia. So the name, when God brought the name Cambodia when I was praying, I thought, hmm, where is that? And yeah, and so for me, when I saw that it, it was in Asia and it was also part of the 1040 window, I said, yes, I'm going to Cambodia. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and you were coming from the States, correct? No, I left the States with the aim of going back t uh, to Kenya to be involved in missions, to become a missionary. Because I kept saying, I want to be a missionary. God has called me to uh, be a missionary. And, but it took me a long time to finally get to decide, okay, now I'm going to be a missionary right now like eventually so i went to kenya first uh with the hope that i'll become a missionary but i also ended up again going to sierra leone i thought i'll do something that is missionary related in sierra leone but i ended up working for an ngo and then i came back to kenya during the e ebola outbreak mm -hmm. went back to kenya and then uh the next year the year after I went back to Kenya from Sierra Leone is when God laid in my heart Cambodia. And yeah, from there I went to, I joined the Navigators to do yeah. uh, training, discipleship training with the preparation, like with the hope of like uh, after the training, then I'll be able to go to Cambodia. Cool. So yeah. during that training, was there anything that you felt like was really helpful in you becoming a missionary or thinking of yourself as a missionary? Yeah, I think one of the things that really uh, I can say during that training, the navigator's training, was, was the idea of suffering, pain and suffering, um, which for me before I joined the navigator's training was an idea that was abstract. It was far out there. And I, when I joined the Navigators, I was taught uh, the theology of risk and suffering. And so for me, that taught me to embrace suffering as part of uh, not just the Christian journey, but also as part of um, a, a missionary's journey, that suffering and pain will always be part of uh, a Christian's journey and more so a missionary's uh, life. Did you feel like you had quite a bit of that suffering and pain there in Sierra Leone or maybe even here in Cambodia? I had a bit of that preparation when I was actually with the Navigators. Okay. Yeah, it was like um, God was preparing me not just theoretically, but even experiencing it with, with when I was in training with the Navigators. 
yeah, so I experienced in Sierra Leone. I didn't experience much of it. No. Uh, yeah, here I have experienced a little bit of it. Not a l not so much, but just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, between uh, you've you've seen quite a few different cultures. Got Kenya, Sierra Leone, yeah. States. Yes. And here in Cambodia. So, what in terms of Cambodian culture stands out to you? Um, I think the food. The food stands out. Um, like what part of the food? The fact that like the whole chickens in there, <laughs> <laughs> like the heads staring back at you. <laughs> There's quite a lot. Um, um, basically, one of the things is the fact that they like uh, seafood. Yeah. Seafood, and for me, being a Maasai, I like my beef. <laughs> <laughs> I like yes. my beef. I like my goat. So. Yeah. But. You know, there's like, no goat you, here, huh? yeah, no goats, no, well, there's beef, but no goats. Yeah. So, <laughs> how does the beef compare? Nothing compared to Maasai beef, like that, huh? I, it's, it's okay, it's only like the only fact is that I don't get enough, <laughs> like, I would <laughs> want my. <laughs> so, what do you do? Are you thinking like steak size type of thing? Or what steak do you do? size, like, you know, you go to a restaurant here and you get like three pieces oh, of Oh, I know, they're pieces. so thin. So, I so know. thin. I'm like, I haven't had any beef, I mean beef, meat, beef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. exactly. You get like a meat in your dish and you do feel like it's mostly vegetarian. It's, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. So for me, I miss, I miss being in Kenya. I miss being able to eat as much beef and good. Yeah. And the f seafood, uh, kruong somewhat. Yeah. Yeah, Do like it or not? I don't like it as oh, much. I'm not used to it. I'm so not much. used to it. Yeah, in Kaip, I had one uh, crab at my colleague's house, and I was like, I just, it's too much to break the shell. Yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> but how about like the squid? Have you ever tried the squid? The squid, the squid is much like better. That. Yeah, yeah. I like octopus? it, but like fried or yeah. uh, roasted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have to go to the uh, crab market later. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, were your expectations different once you came to Cambodia? Um, your expectations of what it was like to be a missionary did that change once you came to Cambodia? I think one of the expectations that I was uh, like I was told before I came, uh, quite a few people mentioned to me was the fact that I'm black. Um, and as an African coming to Cambodia, I should be prepared to be looked down uh, because uh, the Khmer people, as I was told, don't they look down on black skin, dark skin, like black. But you're definitely you know. taller than most Khmer. <laughs> yeah. So, but when I came here, it was quite different. I didn't feel like you know, I was being looked at, though I had weird questions of like, is it so hot in Africa that your skin is darker? <laughs> you know, questions like that. <laughs> so, yeah, but I basically have experienced the opposite of that, like people embrace me. They're more keen and interested in my hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They want to know, like, even in here in Kaip, I go to the market and they're like, is it braided? So they're wondering, what is it yeah. about her hair? So It's a good, easy conversation. Stuff, yeah, right? it is. It is. Yeah. And it's actually kind of the funny thing. It's like when um, uh, when I got to know you was when we were on that bus together. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, at that bus stop, they were all asking us questions kind yeah. of as the foreigners. Yes, so yes, we yes. So naturally yes. Attack, yeah. attract attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a good, especially for the women, they're always interested in the hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 a lot of people touch my beard too. Yeah. Um, and it's always a little bit awkward. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do people like just reach out and touch your hair too? No, but um, yeah, sometimes I tell them it's okay to touch yeah, I, yeah. so it's a fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> because like in uh, Cambodia it's rude to touch somebody's head so yeah, most true. would not ask to touch but they are wondering like but there was like one or two who like can I touch yeah, yeah. so they are wondering like what is it is it like especially the extensions is it like your real hair is it you know yeah 
how long how many years <laughs> yeah like how long does it take to do that yeah so what advice would you give people who are interested in becoming a missionary um i would say it's not difficult to be a missionary you just have to basically more of relying on god and also you have to make sure that it's god who's calling you and um, making sure that you hear God, right? Because if God doesn't call you, then you will quickly run away. <laughs> you won't sit, stay in the field. So make sure you hear God, right? Um, yeah, it's God calling you and not just people suggesting that you yeah. should do this. Um, because when God calls you, he will sustain you in the field. Totally. And yeah, when you have that... Uh, conviction uh like your personal conviction yeah. you have you've heard clearly from god you know it's god and then like if things get difficult then you know that he is sustaining you absolutely yeah, yeah. i yeah. fully agree with that for you what did you do to kind of confirm that it was god or how a lot of people ask me well, how do you know it's that 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 was was God how was it clear in your life it was clear from scripture mostly from scripture uh, there are scriptures you read and you 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 feel you have the impression that God is speaking clearly to you like dropping those those impressions it's always good to confirm it from scripture and also uh, for me when I was raising support and I was able, because somebody was like, what if you don't get to raise enough to go? Then I was like, well, it's okay. <laughs> then yeah. It means then I don't go. But I was able to raise enough to go. So I felt like that was also God confirming that he was behind um, the calling. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So favorite memory in Cambodia so far? Favorite memory... I think I don't have like a specific one. I just have many that have to do with the language. Um, when I can converse finally, because it was difficult at the beginning, but when I can finally say, oh, wow, I just spoke to that person and I understood everything. Mm -hmm. Or he spoke to me and I could answer questions. Like we I could have a conversation. So times like those are like, oh, so encouraged. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a lot of work learning a language. And how many languages do you know again? It's like five or something? Yeah, five. Or five now adding Khmer, that will make six. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. So for you, even despite knowing so many languages before, learning the language has been a challenge, correct? Yeah, because it was different. All the other languages I've known were the, the script the letters are the same the roman alphabet oh, they right, like the right. same like the english alphabet totally. but coming here not only is a script different but even the just how you hear it is different it's totally different because it's mm -hmm. asian i don't know any uh, asian language so just hearing it was different reading the script is different and it's just like i i used to call it at the beginning i used to call it the weird characters <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all look the same they all look the no same spaces, yeah so the sentences are wild. yeah yeah no spaces nothing at the end of like for the like each word so yeah. in fact i remember when i was uh when I came, first came, we have orientation uh, in uh, Singapore. I went to the library and I picked a Khmer Bible and I cried. Mm. I cried because I felt like I don't think I'm ever going to be able to read this. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to actually learn this language and be able to read it and be able to share the gospel with it and I look back and I'm like wow now I can read <laughs> yeah I can understand most of it 
you know, and it's just, it's amazing how one year and a half can do what, what one year and a half can do. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me like for you and your heart, you really, yeah, why are you so passionate about learning the language and wanting to be able to communicate that gospel clearly? Yeah, I think the you, you just that. answered it. <laughs> being able to communicate the, the gospel clearly, being able to because the reason I'm here is to lead people to Christ, to bring them to God, to basically preach the gospel um, and have lives transformed. So being able to to understand the language and the culture is is the first thing and it's important if you cannot communicate then you know yeah, yeah. so in terms of like like you mentioned language and culture yeah. so for missionaries who are wanting to come out to Cambodia would you give many advice on learning the culture what could you tell them yeah I think the culture most of it is just learning by association being here and mm -hmm. observing <laughs> and asking lots and lots of questions yeah, yeah. and then just experiencing it firsthand yeah. there is no shortcut yes yeah. yes yeah. I think that's what we see the longer you're here the more you know it's never like yeah. you know it all yeah yeah and yeah maybe that's a good thing yeah yeah maybe it keeps us humble yeah so um What's the most difficult part of being a missionary here so far? I think the most for me, what has been the most difficult part was last year we lost a colleague. And yeah. Yeah, that is, that is definitely. Yeah, I was just like four or five months new in the country and um, yeah. yeah, it was difficult just losing somebody that uh, was a colleague, a missionary colleague, and yeah, for me, I was at that point, I was like, I did not sign up for this. Mm -hmm. I knew I could lose people back home, you know, and I might end up dying myself, but I wasn't ready, especially immediately, to lose a colleague. Yeah, I think that was the most difficult part. It was, yeah, it was painful. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, yeah. I remember getting that news as well. Mm -hmm. It just made me realize, like, I'm not guaranteed yeah. tomorrow. I'm not guaranteed time yeah. either. It, it definitely made me reevaluate. Um, what I was doing, it was actually a major factor in, in me quitting my teaching job yeah. and going into mission work full time. Yeah. Because I was like, if I only had a few years left, yeah. I, that's what I'd want to be doing. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, the other main challenge, which is a constant challenge for me, is the heat. It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot in Cambodia. Hotter than Kenya? It is hotter than Kenya. Is it more humid than Kenya? More humid, more hotter. Really? Yeah, because like in Kenya, we don't even need ACs in the houses. We don't have it. We don't know what an AC is yeah. in the house. Does it get really cool at night? Yeah, it, it, it is cool at yeah, night. Yeah, it always happen here in Cambodia. Yeah, it is so hot. It's just, yeah. In fact, we, there was like a power cut earlier, mm -hmm. like a few, for a few <laughs> minutes. I was learning language. And it was just like, okay. Yeah. I think the houses are hotter too. I think Inside right. the houses. I think the way they, they construct the houses is just still hot. Yeah. Any yeah. tricks on dealing with the heat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, don't, I, have, I don't think I have found any tricks. Maybe just drinking a lot of water would help. Yeah. 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 But still, it's still you still feel the heat yeah yeah I know. yeah and then uh let's say if you had one minute to tell every khmer person something well, what would you tell them in that one minute ah in that one minute i will tell them that the khmer people are very religious and superstitious and literally like what paul says in acts chapter 17 
that they have so many idols, so many altars, literally, in their houses, outside the houses, temples, everywhere. That's the first thing I noticed when I came. And, 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 and so, like, yeah, they're very religious and superstitious, and they actually have that heart and the, the, the heart <laughs> and the hunger to want to know God. And so, and, but they don't know the real God. So like the way Paul was saying, they have, uh, they don't have it written, but they have an unknown God, but they can know God. They can get to know God, the true God who created them. He created them all. He created the world. He created everything there is. And he does not live in temples built by human hands, but he put the Khmer people here in Cambodia and he put the different people who are now alive right now in Cambodia so that they can seek God and that they can find him because God is actually not far away from them yeah they it can be they can find God Amen. yeah that's great yeah thanks so much is there any other things you would want to leave with viewers or anyone else that's wanting to become a missionary anything well, I can say it's, it's, it's good to begin somewhere, uh, to become a missionary. And where they can begin is by praying. Just start praying for the nations. Because like in Cambodia, we have about 2% Christianity. That's really pretty low. And so they can begin to pray for the nations, for Cambodia, for places where the gospel has not reached. And then from there, God can um, say upgrade them maybe <laughs> to a level of going. And also we need people to send and support financially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always um, tell people too, it always starts in your backyard and, yeah. and just being, um, or your front yard, but just yeah. you being a missionary in the location God yes, has you. Yes, yes, so exactly. did you feel like you had a lot of opportunities with that in Kenya or in yes, the States? Yes, 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 yes. I did have lots of, of opportunities, especially in Kenya, because I think I was more at home in Kenya. So, mm -hmm. like, I would sit with somebody in a vehicle and would strike a conversation and share the gospel. So yeah, good. so yeah, I did have uh, opportunities in, in, in Kenya and, and just even just serving in the church, serving in, in, in college and yeah, doing student ministry that I was doing with the navigators, I did have that, yeah. But you're right, it's important to just keep doing, being an ambassador of Christ where you are, beginning from Jerusalem, like what uh, the book of Acts says, Acts 1-8, beginning in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, where you are, yeah. Does your neighbor know that you're a believer? Have you shared the gospel with your neighbor? Amen. No. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Oh, this, is, this is great. Yeah. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, if uh, you have any more questions for Sian, then uh, comment down below and then I'll send them to her and and she can reply. Um, thanks. Tumrit Leah. Tumrit Leah. Prepotin Paul. Yeah.